right welcome 1101 guys so without further ado let me get started good morning good afternoon good evening from wherever you are joining in thank you very much for joining elite ciso elite knowledge session and today we are going to see some cyber kung fu from aman malhotra because what you see on the title is a global black belt uh, working for microsoft so Uh, there will be some very decent cyber kung fu around the threat detection part right so topic is how do you how do you improve your your threat detection and the with the convergence of ai xdr and secof right all very very cool jazzy terms so we will see how aman dives into it dissects it and and bring new paradigm for cio ciso's in terms of understanding and improving the threat detection from the agenda perspective what you see on the left hand side is we we do quick welcome right for initial 5 minutes and then aman will i mean aman will do the session for about 40 45 minutes and then at the end we will save about 15 minutes for q and a uh, and we will also issue blockchain certificate we will do our wheel of fortune and the wheel of fortune giveaway is a smart speaker what you see on the screen and then we will have a premium giveaway as well that is going to be apple airpods this is only for elite ciso members who participated in the linkedin poll right now as you know that we conduct this stand and attend session or or we give this challenge what this challenge is about this challenge is that if you are going to sit for the entire day while you are working you might have all these problems if you are going to stand you will have all these good things happening with you right i say it every time and instead of instead of repeating myself and just showing this slide i thought why not share a video with you guys time is 1102 we still have 3 minutes i'm going to play this 2 minutes video which is which is again around the importance of standing uh, throughout the day right while while we cio ciso we kind of sit a lot it's a desk job but again if you're going to sit the entire day you might have lot of challenges what challenges let's hear in the next slide and aman if you could confirm uh, the audio is coming yes people who sat for more than 8 hours a day with no physical activity whether it's due to laziness or due to office work they have a risk of dying similar to the risk of dying posed by obesity and smoking Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues Journal Club. I'm Roshni Dhar and today we're going to discuss that sitting for 6 to 8 hours a day is linked to increased risk of early death. A new research is adding further weight to the argument that prolonged sitting may be hazardous to your health. An international study surveying more than 1 lakh individuals in 21 countries found that people who sat for 6 to 8 hours a day had a 12 to 13 percent increased risk of early death and heart disease, while those who sat for more than eight hours daily increased that to a sobering 20 percent. The study, co-led by Simon Fraser University Health Science Professor Scott Lear and V. Ling of Beijing's Chinese Academy of Medical Science, this research is published in the Journal of Jama Cardiology. The research followed individuals over an average of 11 years and determined that high amounts of sitting time were associated with increased risk of early death and cardiovascular disease. While sitting was problematic in all countries, it was especially so in low income and lower middle income countries. Not surprising Those who sat the most and were the least active had the highest risk up to 50%, while those who sat the most but were also the most active had a substantially lower risk of about 17%. Researchers found that a combination of sitting and inactivity accounted for 8.8% of all deaths, which is close to the contribution of smoking. It's a global problem that has a remarkably simple fix. Scheduling time to get out of that chair is a great start. That's all for today. Stay safe. Never miss a medical update. From great guys so you see what what challenges we have while we keep sitting so i do not want elite ciso be the another reason for you guys to come to this webinar and sit for another hour so that's why we give this challenge right why don't you why don't you guys stand while you are attending this session like i am attending i'm standing right now and what about you aman are you going to stand or you're going to sit even after watching this video <laughs> no suddenly my focus has shifted to going on gym than doing the session but yeah <laughs> 
I, awesome. I can stand for a minute, but yeah, for the session, I will sit, but I will I definitely take I this learning with me. Great, great. So guys, if you if you accept this challenge, go to the chat and say, yes, you are accepting. And with this, let me transfer it over to Aman for the cyber Kung Fu that we are going to see. So over to you, Aman. Thank you, Vikas. Uh, good morning, everyone. And just in case anybody is joining outside India, so good evening, good afternoon, or early good morning to you. Uh, so what we'll do is, yes, uh, we will cover the session on uh, next gen threat detection. One second, I'm just sharing my screen as we speak so that we have the continuity. Okay, uh, if uh, because if the screen is not available, please do let me know. So the screen, screen is visible. Now. Yeah, it's visible. Cool. OK, so uh, what we will do today is uh, I know. Uh, we have been hearing about AI a lot nowadays, and especially from Microsoft side as well. We have been doing a lot of announcements, a lot of uh, updates that have come in. I am very sure a lot of you would have tried your hands and played with chat GPT already and the other AI tools that are coming out as well. Uh, so there's a lot happening on AI. Every company is doing or trying their hands on AI. Uh, Microsoft at Microsoft, what we are doing, uh, of course, we are announcing it on a daily basis. But more and more, I speak to CISOs, CIOs, and other security leaders, practitioners, and all those uh, people in security. Everybody has the same thought that uh, six months back, maybe in December, maybe in November, when we were ending 2022, Nobody, the landscape was totally different. Nobody was so much, uh, you can say, hyped or talking about AI at that time. Everybody was saying, okay, these are the options. This is how I'm progressing. This is my plans for 2023. And then suddenly you see in the last three months, six months, the landscape has totally changed. Uh, we have AI which has come up. Uh, people are talking a lot. You, if you are following, like for example, if you follow all the US. Uh, uh, companies that are announcing their results in the Indian IT companies. A lot of companies, when you see their leaders come and talk nowadays, uh, you listen to them mention AI all almost exclusively through, during their speech, during their talk or during their results announcement. So it's, it's gaining a lot of momentum. And uh, today what we are going to do is we are going to explore a few options and I will show you demos. I will show you some screens. I will show you various possibility and options how we can adopt into this adopt ai into security ecosystem security world how we are doing it at microsoft of course i will take examples of microsoft tools and uh, uh, cover the topic but uh, the concept will be how ai is coming in helping us become more smarter more faster to be honest data is increasing on that note uh, before I start, let me address two, three, two, three well known, two, three famous dialogues and sayings that are going around the world. And let's address that out itself. So, one, I see a lot of people saying that AI is taking up speed. Tomorrow, AI will take our jobs as well. So, what we think, or what at least I think, I have been discussing with a lot of people, what I think. People who start using AI and learn how to use AI tools and tools uh, and increase their productivity work with AI tools will replace the people who don't use AI at all. So that's what I think will happen. And uh, second thing, uh, AI is not about a chatbot like a chat GPT that can that can give you a lot of inputs. A lot of people also say that okay, what's the difference between playbook and AI, chatbot and AI? So AI is much more. If you see. In Microsoft, we call our security or any AI developed service, we call it co-pilot, right? So it's not autopilot, like for example, Tesla is autopilot, right? So it's not autopilot, it's co-pilot. So human always works with AI, right? So there are different forms of AI which we'll cover in the session. For example, nat natural uh, language processing, reasoning engines, ML models. There, there are lots and lots of forms of AI which is there in the market nowadays. And how do we leverage all that in security? So on that note, uh, let's kickstart our session. Uh, how I'm going to cover this uh, cover this next 40, 45 minutes. So first, I will just give you like a quick introduction on the AI 
things that are going on. It it will be like a two three minute summary of everything that's happened in the last uh, six months. Brought into a summary what the top companies are saying about AI, what different actions different people are doing, and all that. Then we move into uh, what, for example, Microsoft is doing with AI, and then we deep dive into security. So maybe in like four or five minutes from now, we will dig deep into security, different security buckets or specifications. Like for example, threat detection is one of the one of the area in security. Cloud security is one of the area. Your zero trust pillars, your on-prem, your when I say zero trust pillars, your endpoint identities, everything comes into it. So then we'll cover one by one and see how AI uh, helps us with all that, and then how everything ties up together. So let's kick start. Uh, first thing, of course, I think we covered in our introductory discussion that yes, uh, everybody is acknowledging that AI is a reality now. It's there. Everybody is uh, talking about it. Everybody started using it. Uh, you see a lot of companies, for example, in India itself, you see Wipro Infosys recently in the last one month announced that they are doing a lot of stuff with OpenAI. Microsoft, of course, you would be hearing since the past six months what we are doing in AI. So it's all over uh, the place right now. And yeah, some you can say some announcements, some screenshots that I took from the last six months. So it's happening and I'm sure a lot of you would have tried out chat GPT and other tools as well. So also what I did was capture some of the some of the statements from some uh, large enterprise organizations. For example, Carmis, they they mentioned that they estimate that an individual would take 11 years to do what OpenAI can do in days. So that's the level of productivity improvement you can see. Progressive is saying like. Or I can say they can esti they are estimating that they can they can save $10 million annually with AI power chatbots. And on the other hand, uh, we have EY, uh, which is saying that they anticipate or they, they forecast that 250,000 hours of manual work can be automated using AI. So these are some of the estimations, some of the uh, statements that are made by a lot of uh, large organizations and why why I have included this statement. So whenever you hear a leader of any company come and speak, right? So the statements they make, the 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 vision that they show, you know that okay, company is moving in that direction and that's the roadmap and that also gives you a lot of hints about how the industry will progress and how we as individuals in security should progress our skill set as well, right? So that's one thing I wanted to mention. And then there are a few reports. Uh, of course, 87% of organization as per the MIT review said that AI will give them an edge. Similarly, there are some other stats. I think we all acknowledge that AI is going to become uh, one big thing and we should skill ourselves up with these tools and technologies and use it to our advantage, right? Uh, let me give you one example. So if you heard one of the recent, uh, uh, when Satya was here in India, he gave a keynote, right? Uh, so if you heard his keynote, uh, Nandan Nilekani was also there. So that video, if you have seen on YouTube. So he mentioned that he was giving an example of one of the coder uh, back in the US, who's one of the best coder in around the globe. So he was giving his example that at present he's using, for example, GitHub Copilot, which helps him, which helps him to code a lot of a lot of uh, the usual coding stuff, which can, which is more repetitive. And he is focusing more on the logic, the 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 the, the rules, the flows, how the code will do the functionality. So 60% of the work he's able to do using Copilot, and imagine like. 60% means whatever he was doing in 10 days, he's able to do in four days. So that's the level of productivity increase uh, people are actually extracting out of out of these tools. So what we are doing at Microsoft, maybe just last 30 seconds on AI, uh, we are of course adapting it across everything we do uh, across our cloud to transform both digitally and do the AI transform. So we have our co-pilot sitting across, for example, security, infra, cloud, business application, modern work, uh, digital app and uh, innovations, and we have different co-pilots uh, in that respective category. Today we will focus on 
security because uh, uh, we will see how security copilot can help you transform and what's the different ways we can use AI. Tomorrow you can build your own AI, right? You can leverage copilot plus build your own app. So it's all about the concept how AI we can use in different aspects in different uh, models of security to help ourselves and our team as well. So on that note, uh, these are different copilots. Let let's go and dig deep into security now. So security, of course, see the need of copilot. I think we all acknowledge now, uh, especially people who have been in security field. Uh, we all like. I remember 10 years ago we were. It's all about firewalls, DLP, antiviruses, and all that. Now, and the industry has grown so fast, right? The EDRs came, the XDR, EDR became XDR. AV became NGAVs and then SIM came, UEBA came. First, it was only a log management. Now we have SOAR. There's so much intelligence. Now XTR is merging with SIM and SOAR. There's a lot happening. Uh, and the number of sheer number of tools that have come up, which are very good, but if you see the number of tools that have come up is huge. And these are some of the stats, but if, if for example, I'm working with my team in, in, in a, SecOps uh, environment, whether I'm just doing vulnerability assessment or I'm doing audits or I'm uh, monitoring the SOC operations for my company, or I might be a threat hunter, just an example, or I might be any other role that I'm doing in, inside the security uh, op chart. I have a lot of data to look into and then take a lot of actions, right? And these are just some stats, like for example, the volumes have increased a lot. Uh, first point is mostly around volumes. Just an example, 4000 parts per attacks per second. Imagine if like even 100 attacks are happening per second in my company and if I have a team of like 10 people, <laughs> how do I scale, right? How do I, how do, of course, one thing is I keep adding n number of people in my team and then different people build that tree, uh, management, governance, everything. But that's not a scalable model, right? We anyway know the the skill set crunch in the industry, uh, the upskilling, and then the number of tools you are using. For example, if I if I know or if I am really good hands on on Microsoft security tool, I might not be good with any other tool, right? Or I might be good in three different tools, but not the fourth or the fifth one. So we need to have different. SMEs, different people, different teams and who can look after this. So it's not a practically a scalable model. We need some kind of a smart uh, framework to help us with it. Second is, of course, time. Uh, we cannot have our queue grow and grow. Like, for example, if if I'm getting 100 attacks per second, I'm sure I'm getting 100 or more than 100 alerts per second, right? And if I am, I take like 10 minutes to look into an alert and classify whether it's an incident or not. And 10 minutes is like a very good, very good time in the industry, right? You are you are evaluating an alert in 10 minutes, classifying it. You can do it quicker, but if it's a complex, high, medium, critical kind of a alert, you might take 10 minutes, right? So it's a good enough time. Uh, if I start clearing alerts in 10, 10 minutes, just like in one hour, I can do only six, right? So second thing is time. I need time. I need some decision making. Uh, one thing is, for example, uh, if I need to, if I'm evaluating an alert, I need uh, some observables. I need data. OK, if it's come from EDR, I will I will go and fetch maybe the IP address, the user detail, the hash values or whatever is related to the alert. The second thing is, I open the alert, everything is fed to me with some insights and all that. I just review everything, take a call, take a decision and move out. And if I think, for example, something similar can be automated, then I take a call. So that's what saves time. And third, of course, I think we have covered, which is mostly linked to the first two. So of course, that's one key reason why people or organizations are looking to see some smarter, smarter models that can help them. Uh, I think I've discussed most of these points, but yes, uh, tool set, the number of tool sets are increasing. Uh, for the same, you need to build a team. You need to establish process governance and then all those things. The attacks, sophisticated attack techniques. Yes, that's a good point. See, uh, if if we are skilling ourselves and we are becoming smart, I'm sure the attackers are skilling themselves even faster, right? 
it's not that if i if i get a phishing email today i will keep getting that phishing email for the rest of the year the other other side of the world will also try to upskill themselves make them make their attack smarter make their attack not noticeable change their technique if they think it's not working so nothing is constant okay so even if you fit build a rule build a automation technique for one particular thing you need to think like a attacker think like a ethical hacker okay what's next what's the permutation combination a person can move from here right and then build different uh, dif different defense techniques around it so the attacks are becoming more and more sophisticated as well right so we need to evolve around accordingly and then collaborate with our team members as the team size grows we need to collaborate with one another so these are different day to day challenges or day to day things that we do and the third thing if you look from a ciso point of view for example if i am the ciso when i when i invest in a team and tools i am expecting three four broad apis from it or rois from it one my, i should have the right coverage second i should my posture security posture should improve we should be, become more and more mature in terms of security third my risk should go down i know attack can come from anywhere uh, it can be a zero day attack whatever but my risk should be minimum i should have proper defense tech defense processes and techniques and whatever put in place so that my risk is covered and third my team improves in productivity the overall productivity the time to handle everything improves day out uh, day in and day out plus if i'm bringing tools it should definitely improve help my team grow and become more productive so that's a pro and of course i'm not touching about cost and price and all the stuff but in terms of productivity in terms of roi in terms of what i'm looking for except a dollar value these are like three four topics that somebody looks into and that's where they expect the tools to help and that's where what we have done for example if i take example of microsoft so at microsoft of course we have our security portfolio like for example we have microsoft defender when i say defender so defender generally covers zero trust pillars what is zero trust pillars your identity so something to look after your identity you have for example aad you have mdi defender for identity then you have your users users and devices which is nothing but your endpoints right user of course identity we have taken care of but the other part is endpoints so you have defender for endpoint in microsoft you have defender for vulnerability management which is like a subset of uh, endpoint as well you have defender for cloud apps which looks after your app uh, applications on cloud you have office defender for office 365 your the way you store the details and everything then you have microsoft preview priva which is mostly on data security compliance and then when you build your zero trust this xdr which we nowadays say uh, why i didn't start with the word xdr because a lot of different people analyst community companies a lot of people define xdr separately some would say edr plus ngav is a xdr some would say edr that can automate stuff is a xdr some would say edr plus identity is a xdr uh, maybe in microsoft for example we say office identity cloud apps cloud security uh, threat intelligence defender for endpoint vulnerability everything when you join it's a xtr so uh, xtr definition varies but what we try to do is take a broader set of uh, tool set include that into the xtr concept then you have other defenders like defender for ot especially for companies who are on the manufacturing sites and have plants and sites and they want to protect their ot assets as well uh, layer 0 to layer 4 uh, 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 devices as well and then you have defender for threat intel and other defenders all this are connected by microsoft sentinel which is our same plus sore plus uva 3 in 1 tool uh, which we have you can bring everything together there for example everything from defender or any other tool that you would have already invested in so any of that tool and we will look into those architecture diagrams how it all ties up together as well uh, so you have defenders uh, your zero trust pillars you have your cloud security your cloud buckets for example you have azure you might have gcp aws so uh, your cloud security bucket your on-prem your api ecosystem other tools your applications 
uh, your th other feeds that you are uh, coming, your subsidiaries, your sister companies, and your companies abroad. So there's a lot of a big ecosystem that your organization might have. Everything comes together. But in terms of AI, what we are doing is like our security copilot is something that spans across all these tools. Uh, what does OK, what's the implication or just give it a thought on that, right? How does that help? For example, you have a you have an alert that triggers in Defender for Endpoint in your EDR. So when something is triggering in EDR and if you have a co-pilot sitting there, it's highly, highly advisable, highly productive if you can tackle it there itself and solve it. OK, no worries if it penetrates up the threat detection food chain. Uh, so you have your SIM, uh, which is Sentinel. OK, you have some signals coming from identity as well. You correlate and if that correlation can be done and then taken care of, of course, the number of alerts, the time, everything is saved and then take actions immediately. That helps as well, right? So the concept of Copilot, uh, what we are doing in Microsoft security is one, of course. Uh, start from the detection layer first level of detection itself so first level of detection might be your for example your EDRs, your intunes uh, your defender for identity so all that level of uh, your detection rails and slowly move up as well uh, up to sentinel second what you can expect from security copilot or maybe uh, what we can do is First, let's see what security copilot is. I'm sure a lot of people would have read about security copilot and uh, might have seen a lot of demos, sessions as well, live sessions that we keep doing. But security copilot is our AI powered analyst tool uh, that aims to enable all of us to respond quickly at machine speed, at the speed of the processor that you have, and reduce your risk. So that's the whole concept of security copilot. And what's it built using? So there's a lot of things. Of course, Microsoft Security has built it over over OpenAI, but there's a lot of things that goes into it. Uh, we have the hyperscale AI infra, which supports it. Uh, a lot of advanced general models. What I do, what I mean by models, it's not just a not just a rule. It's not just a, uh, you can say a, 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 a normal machine learning model or a rule that we write. It's like, for example, natural language processing. It's like responsive engines. It's like image recognition. It's analysis of different uh, uh, data sets across different sources of uh, sources or origin of data and then taking it and giving you a response. Also, OpenAI, uh, which I point I wanted to make earlier. You can think of OpenAI or oh, sorry, uh, Copilot as three different has three different broad advantages or functions. If I am a security analyst, I can be working in a SOC or I can be working in, for example, in a VM team or I might be managing endpoint security, whatever. But there are three ways I can use Copilot or AI, any AI uh, supportive tool. First, to be reactive. What do I mean by reactive? So we'll, I will show you some demos uh, going forward, but like in Copilot, we have a prompt bar. So you can say, okay, for example, show me, uh, show me if there is a multiple failed login uh, that you have detected, and it's on one user. Okay, for example, it's on me. So Aman is facing multiple failed login uh, issue. Then I can ask uh, Copilot, okay, how many other users are facing the similar issue in this entire organization? It will run the scan, come back with the results. So first thing is reactive. For example, I can say, OK, show me the attack uh, kill chain end to end. Plant it for me. It can create that for you. I can say, OK, quickly put that in a PPT uh, and email it to me. You get it. You show it to your SOC manager, for example. So these are more reactive. Proactive is when you have to automate a lot of things, you can do proactive. Now, one question that generally comes up, especially for SIM and SOAR, not for other tools. Other tools also it can come, but especially for SIM and SOAR, because uh, in SOAR you have something called playbooks, which also aims you to provide automation. But if, for example, a alert that gets generated from a EDR and something that is also caught by our identity tools, 
flows up to the same and goes up to the sore. Playbook kicks in when it reaches the sore. Copilot starts working when the alert gets triggered in that one first tool, right? So triggering a playbook can be a step you can do using Copilot, but it's just a small subset of it. So that's one thing I wanted to mention. So yeah, that's one. So first is reactive. Second is uh, proactive where you automate a lot of things. You make your model smarter. Uh, also one example for reactive, I will show the demo uh, in, in coming minutes as well is. Uh, for example, uh, I, I need to query. I need to query my archival data to see, for example, if there are some traces of an attack that has happened just now we have caught, but I just want to be sure that there are no traces left over the historical data as well. Something I can ask Copilot to do for me and fetch the result and then I use my human intelligence to do the or join the dots as we say. So that's one uh, reactive proactive and third is to bridge the skill gaps like in Sentinel, if I need to write a query and I'm I'm very new to Sentinel, I'm still learning KQL. I can write I can ask Copilot to write a query for me, right? So it's like bridging skill gaps as well. It makes learning faster. It will retain knowledge for you. So these are you can say two three uh, ways according to me that you can best use uh, Copilot or any other AI tool. So in terms of Copilot, uh, what do we aim to do? Aim to achieve? Enable response in minutes, not hours, what we were doing. A lot of examples, uh, if you see on our website, for example, if you if you pick up a playbook, any playbook uh, for an incident that you will have, the alert gets generated till it gets solved. If you can automate 60, 70, 80% of the steps, or somebody can do it for you before you even start with the first step. So that saves a lot of time, right? And you can reduce the time a lot a lot so that's and that's why we call it copilot right so someone who can help with the human uh, and enable him or her to take decision faster second simplifying complex stuff with natural language prompts you can you can so let me show you a demo as well uh, maybe in a minute where you can select drop downs uh, okay i want to i want to check sensitive data in my aws database with some other condition, show me the output. It will give you a, an output. You can select drop downs. You don't have to write a, that complex query with four or five filters, or you can, of course, write in the prompt bar where prompt bar is available. So it will simplify complex uh, task with uh, natural language inputs and processing and re uh, the reasoning engine behind the scenes. And of course, you will be able to catch a lot of things because you are uh, trying to do that. Uh, and of course, talent. Uh, I would say more on scalability. Why if, for example, if I'm handling 50 alerts in one day manually, if I can do 200 alerts with Copilot, that's scalable, right? That's that's something that you would love to do and increase your productivity. So that's one another aim. So on that note, let's get into threat detection. Uh, how we are using AI security copilot across all different XDR and SecOp operations. So this is just a refresher slide. So copilot sits across the entire Microsoft portfolio of products, right from Defender to Sentinel to compliance and all those things. Okay, yeah, so we have this two minute video as well. I thought let me show you this two minute video before we go into uh, different buckets. So what we will do after the video, we will cover threat detection first. Then zero trust pillars XDR and then cloud security and then end up end with uh, some AI best practices and pillars that you should take care of while adopting AI. If if the sound is not available uh, audible, then let me know, please. If you've ever worked in a security operations center, you know it can feel like mayhem more open browser tabs than you can count, alerts and incidents popping up all the time, Security Copilot is different. It helps you simplify and focus. At the center is the prompt bar. Prompts allow you to ask a natural language question like, what are all the incidents in my enterprise? You can ask for a summary of a vulnerability. 
where you can feed in files, URLs, or code snippets and ask for information about them. You can also ask for information about incidents or alerts from your other security tools. What you input here stays within your control. Your data is your data. Your prompts and the responses they generate are all saved. Core to Security Copilot is an immutable audit trail so that an organization can always go back into the investigation to understand exactly what data went in and what came out. This is because transparency has been designed in from the very start. Security Copilot uses AI to generate a response to the prompt using what it finds externally and internally to your organization. Here we can see a short summary of a vulnerability and we can see where this information was sourced from. You can edit the prompt if you want to correct or adjust the response. And if you find something that's useful to your team, you can pin it to the pin board. Your pin board holds the responses as you work through an investigation. And the pin board dynamically updates. You can share your findings, export them, and collaborate on them with others. Now, Security Copilot doesn't always get everything right. Here, it has generated a reference to Windows 9, which doesn't exist. AI-generated content can make mistakes. So we've made it easy for you to decide when you want to share feedback with us so we can make Copilot even better. You can indicate whether the response was incorrect, unclear, or maybe incomplete. Prompts can be collected into something called a prompt book, essentially a set of steps or automations that either I or a person on my team has developed. So I don't have a reversing background. By reversing, I mean dissecting malicious code to understand what it does. One of my coworkers asked Security Copilot to reverse engineer a script and it did it. They saved that prompt to a prompt book and now I can use it. In this example, it reverse engineered a malicious PowerShell script, explaining what it did step-by-step step in a way that pretty much anyone could understand. When I saw that Security Copilot could do something like this, it felt like a game-changing moment in our industry. With Security Copilot, you can do in minutes what used to take all day. Okay, so I hope that video provided some context or uh, was useful in providing some concept or uh, a, a sneak preview into how it works inside the tools as well. So on that note, let's get into uh, the different buckets of uh, our cybersecurity SecOps. So first is, of course, what we are doing at Microsoft. One thing we acknowledge and one thing we know is and what will distinguish AI from a chatbot, a playbook, or any other thing is threat intelligence. So one, for example, the data I have, I have a tool that quickly looks into the data, gives me insight, tells me what's in, what's not in, and all those things. Second, threat intelligence, what's happening outside. Nowadays, uh, there's a lot of threat actors that's uh, coming up, right? Every, every day we hear about a new threat actor or some threat actor gaining pace. So threat intelligence is one of the key pillars of Copilot or any AI uh, tool as well. So that's where Microsoft is focusing on improving, not improving, maybe strengthening. It's already improved and already stronger uh, threat intelligence, but some numbers for you, for example, 65 trillion signals. It's something that we are analyzing on a daily basis, uh, almost like 80, uh, you can say 60% saving that you get out of all these things. Plus, if I share very specific numbers for threat intelligence as well, so like the number of signals that we are able to collect, like of course you might be using like Office 365, a very, very simple, we are having this meeting on Teams, right? It's so a Teams, Microsoft 365, Outlook, uh, we have uh, our other services and tools as well, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, lots and lots of, uh, different services which are there uh, for all the gaming fans out there. Somebody might be using Xbox as well, right? So there are a lot of products uh, which are there spread across the globe. And based thanks to that, we are able to collect around 1.4 billion uh, signals from 1.4 billion endpoints across the planet. And that's where we are able to create all those signals and threat intelligence. 
so threat intelligence very important input for any security co-pilot or a or an ai engine to work and help you so what do we do uh, how do we improve or integrate ai across the security products so this is just to show you the categorization so on the left hand side it's your xtr uh, xtr zero trust pillars xtr suit so first is your identities your endpoints your applications email documents cloud apps and iot and ot devices uh, for organizations who have exposure to ot so this is one set or one bucket of your uh, of your threat detection portfolio then uh, for all this we have microsoft 365 defender which is our xtr solution which has copilot inbuilt on the other hand you have your cloud estate or your cloud bucket so you will have uh, a lot of workloads on the cloud your pass sas is all those three pillars that you might have built on your cloud so your resources for example your sql vms containers your key walls for example all those things uh, which are there on your cloud so you want to ensure that safe as well plus your devops how you are building applications codes and everything storing it and then uh, taking it to runtime so that's the two buckets and of course everything ties up together at your uh, thread detection tool which is in our case sentinel which is same so ueb all three combined uh, why combined of course because it's a cloud native tool so i know uh, the words cloud native and cloud hosted are used very loosely so let me define it i'm i'm sure a lot of you will already know but cloud native is something which is born in the cloud uh, and for example sentinel and some other tools as well which are born in the cloud and compared to hosted where like for example you provision a resource and then host a software on it so that's cloud native cloud hosted so that's uh, the microsoft security portfolio and different categorization security copilot can be used for various at various uh, stages of this entire circle and if you see the left hand side statement what i have mentioned is bidirectional integration for example if if there's some action that you need to do or some investigation you need to do on your endpoint in defender 365 and you are sitting on sentinel screen you can do that using the bidirectional integration and update everything at both these places at at one single point in time so that's the level of bidirectional integration that comes it is generally helpful when people are looking to consolidate a lot of tools under the same technology or the same vendor so that's where microsoft is able to provide this broad set of tools so that if you are looking to consolidate for example, your XDR, your cloud security, and your overall threat detection, you can fill that in. So let's cover that one by one. So Sentinel, of course, Sentinel V is our same or UEBA tool. Uh, it provides you end-to-end -end alert and incident lifecycle journey. The moment the alert is generated from any data source, a log is generated by any data source, a activity is registered by any data source, or an alert is generated by an underlying threat detection tool, a EDR, a defender for identity, or any other tool. It goes to the same source, uh, uh, that threat detection layer, in this case, Sentinel. And then from there till the moment it's solved, it takes care of everything. It in includes uh, UEB as well for any anomaly, any behavior responses, uh, and all those things. Threat intelligence, of course, a key ingredient without which none of the tools should ideally work. And the power it gives to you to do proactive threat hunting. Everything is based on KQL queries. You can quickly write hunting queries, run on it. How Copilot can work? Uh, write a query for you. If again, your alert queue is big, pick up the alerts that are almost similar or exactly similar to each other, club that and build one case. So it might be like, for example, there is a, a phishing attack that happened, right? So a lot of users would have clicked on it. So if there are 50 alerts that are related to each other, pointing to the same uh, TTPs, pointing to the same uh, uh, situation or the same data source and the same uh, attack that's happening, it can pick it up, build everything, combine it in one case. And if I'm the analyst, I look into that case, solve all 50 together and I'm done, right? So that's how you can move the queue faster. And in Sentinel, the good thing is it's very lean architecture. 
So Sentinel, because it's cloud native. So what? So generally, if you have seen the OSI model of any SIM, so there are a lot of layers, right? You have your data collection layer, you have your analytics, sorry, data collection, log management, data management, analytics, uh, and then you have reporting, governance, UI, and then if you need more tools, you need you, you add UEBS or another tools, deception, threat intelligence, everything. In Microsoft Sentinel, what we do is all the seven, eight steps that I that I mentioned, move it just two steps. One, data collection. Second, everything in Azure. Your storage, analytics, same or you everything gets taken care at one. So that six, seven blocks that we have, referring to the uh, old school OSI model as well, you just combine it and make only two blocks. So that's the lean architecture. And that's why we are able to leverage co-pilot across end-to-end -end process. So let me tell you why I am making that statement or what's the logic behind it. Imagine I have those different blocks. I have six different tools or diff six different part of a tool, right? So I need to stitch everyone together. I need to ensure all six are singing together and singing, uh, dancing in sync. It's like a perfect, perfect performance. Uh, whereas if everything is handled in inside one one single box and you have the co-pilot look after everything, so you, you, you don't have to. For example, in the first case, one co-pilot will have to uh, just referring, just imagining everybody's AI refers to co-pilot. So one co-pilot will have to uh, wait for the other tool to send input. In case of Microsoft, everything takes care inside one single place, one single bucket. So co-pilot can work end to end. Plus, uh, if you remember the XTR circle I showed you, because of the bi-directional integration and the and the perfect sync between all the threat detection uh, items or threat detection points, it can work together seamlessly and bi-directionally. So that helps AI, or it does not restrict the AI. It helps it to work end to end, right from the alert it was generated. For example, in my O3, in my Microsoft Outlook, till the person who's sitting on Sentinel source screen, everything can be taken care of. So that's an example of Sentinel. I wanted to start with SIM and SOAR first. Uh, these are hey, few Aman, examples. Sorry to yes. interrupt. We are kind of running out of time and you have great grasp on the topic. And yeah. as I mentioned earlier, we might need a workshop. The webinar might not do. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, so maybe one more minute. Otherwise, we'll not have time for Q&A. OK, so what I think maybe I will take three three minutes if that's OK, three, four minutes and then yeah. uh, 50, 51, we move to Q&A. OK, that's fine. Let's go okay. ahead. Okay. So this is just uh, one example. You saw a few examples in the video as well. So these are some examples. For example, analyze the incident, give me all the inputs. So that's something that can be done in Sentinel. If I move ahead, XTR again, uh, the definition of XTR is very important. In, in our case, for example, we have identities, we have endpoints, IOTs, email, collaboration tools like uh, Teams, uh, SharePoint and all those things, cloud apps and your compliance. So again, all this combining with your SIM and so on can take care of all these things. And the third bucket is your CNAP solution, it's basically your cloud security, which takes care of your cloud security. Now this also has three, four pillars. First is your DevOps, your code security, your build to runtime, everything between that, your cloud security, posture management. Posture management is very important because this is one of course, this is one of the priority which I mentioned amongst the priorities of Cisco, but this spams across all three pillars of cloud, IS, PaaS, SaaS, it does not matter which resource you are using. And then you have your cloud workload protection, the, the workloads that you provision on cloud, and then the permission management, which is KIM, your permission management. But what at Microsoft, what we are also doing in using Copilot as well, we are de expanding the definition of CNAP, which generally includes this top four, top four uh, frameworks or models. We are extending this to include four more models, right? So one is data security, very important. We feel data security works hand in hand, and uh, data security can never be separated from, for example, your posture management or workload security. So it's very important. Second, external attack surface management. Uh, imagine one of my resource in cloud. 
and two of my resources in cloud. One is exposed to Internet, so my tool should tell me this is exposed to Internet, so you should address the risk or vulnerability in this resource first and maybe the next one second. So that's uh, why EASM is very important. Azure network security works hand in hand, your DDoS, your WAF, nothing works in silos in security, right? So that works. And then the bi-directional integration with the same which we talked about. So I know we are on short on time. So what I will do is maybe uh, on cloud security, skip a few, few slides. Uh, I wanted to show you, uh, for example, I can, I can take 30 seconds here and show you. Uh, this is an example of reasoning engine. Imagine I need to do hunting and I am new to it, but maybe I don't want to write a query, complex query. It, I need to put three, four filters. So what do I do? For example, I select all the top downs. The example I was giving you, vulnerability in a VM which is high, all these factors I can pull in and fetch the results. So these are different ways that we can use. And maybe last two slides from my side, uh, because I think as we use AI, it is very important to just focus on the principles as well. So uh, of course AI gives us power, but uh, we ensure that for example in Azure, we have security services built around uh, the AI services that we provide. So in all ways, whenever you adopt AI, please some principles that we all should follow as responsible citizen. Uh, it's always transparent. Uh, we are accountable, we are using this fair reliability and all these things. So very important to take care of it. And as Microsoft, what we are aiming to do. So AI services are limited to your ecosystem as well. So your data is your data. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? If I am an IT company, you are an IT company. If I am facing an issue, it should not come and tell you Aman's company is facing the issue, so you take care of it. It can give you a threat actor advisory based on threat intel issued by anyone but your data is limited to your data. The tools are trained in a lab, works and comes and works on your data. It does not take away your data and gives input to other. So I just wanted to make this two uh, or cover this two slides because I think capability wise is one thing, but responsibility and using AI in the right way is one thing. So yeah, uh, Vikas, over to you. Hey, Aman, wonderful <laughs> session, man. Really, it. I mean, a lot of appreciation in the chat as well over here, as you can okay. see. So maybe let's discuss offline in terms of how we can convert it into a workshop, right? Maybe oh, yes. 40 minutes is not doing justice to the entire topic. <laughs> we can have a larger uh, discussion around this.